G'day and welcome to another edition of the BFNL Netball Show. My name's Indian, unfamiliar territory in the hot seat this week with uh, with Kim. Thanks for having me on board. Thanks, Jendi. Give me a bit of a rest from the. Uh from the host chair, Gracie is in Ballarat today and we're down at Arnold's Creek, sunny Arnold's Creek, so we've had to uh, get the, the new guy in to introduce <laughs> yeah. you to the netball world. Yeah, no, it's nice to be the rookie in this case here, so uh, we're flying, it's uh, looking sensational and uh, the beauty is with my role this year I've been able to get out and see some netball games this, uh, this year, which is unfamiliar territory with me personally, I'm used to uh, calling footy games, so I've been able to watch more netball this year than I have in my entire life and uh, loving it. So what do you think of the standard of our BFL netball? Nice and quick. Yeah. It's Very cool. quick and uh, yeah. the, the girls don't muck about as well. They quickly get on with the job and uh, I, I love the spirit. It's uh, nice to see the girls. They, uh, they're a bit nice to each other before the game whereas the guys usually stand up to each other and give each other an elbow on the guts and that's about it. So Yeah, once that whistle goes though, all bets are <laughs> off, we're into it. Yeah. It's pretty exciting. We did see some uh, great games in the latest round of the BFNL and um, Sebas, they're going to be one of the improvers in season 2017, first game of the year, and they put on a show. Yeah, and look, we've heard a lot about Sebastian, haven't we, that they've got this new look team and, and they're in, and our very own Rhiannon Banner has, has left them and, and gone up to uh, the NT, so they're out with the new uh, defensive line in as well. But, you know, they've... I, I didn't know which way to go. I think I might have picked Sebastian, but I can't remember, only because Gracie picked Lakers, I think. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they, they came out and from... Uh, it was a really even first quarter. It was 11 all. Um, and then they just pulled away from there and they just held that lead. Um, I think it was 11... Oh, sorry, it was only three goals in the end, but they, it, I think they jumped them in that second quarter and then just held it from there on. Um, got a really good structure. You know, we know how... Georgia and Adriana worked together um, and they continued on their merry way. Adriana had a really good uh, shooting game as well. They both shot in around the 70, 75%, which is pretty good. You like them in the 80s, but um, that's still a, a pretty good uh, show. Uh, Chrissy James had a good game for Lakers. Um, Mel Allen wasn't there, so they really missed Mel. Um, she's such a focal point down there. But, you know, good on Sebas and... Um, uh, Carly Dix had an exceptional game as well in defence, and uh, yeah, just they should, they just were uh, just couldn't get past her in the end. But some big things ahead for Sebas, I think. Well, there have been the, all the talking points uh, throughout the the preseason. I spoke to a lot of clubs in the off season, and they they highlighted most of them highlighted Sebas was one of the teams to beat. I think Lake Windaree also pointed that out as well, and they, they had a good run with them. So. Look, hats off to Lake Windaree because the challenge was there and uh, they couldn't quite get the job done, but at least they sort of went goal for goal with them in the second half, which yeah, is good. Yeah, yeah. And um, Kirsty Wells Romsey had a really, really good game in the, in the mid court as well. Cara Hart in, in GD. And, you know, they've got a pretty young team, some of those. Like, Ellie Brewer's just come up into A grade and, you know, she played 19, she played Stoppins 19s, but when you, you mix with some of these really experienced girls, it's hard to sometimes have that consistency right through the season, but Ellie's going to grow with every single game. Um, yeah, so I, I'm really impressed with, with the work and I, with, from uh, Sebastian. I heard they've had a really comprehensive uh, pre-season. They've started quite early. Mm -hmm. um, and good on the borough. They'll be up there. We'll, um, they play this brand of netball that, that I quite like. It, it's hard at the ball, but it, it's not... Um, you wouldn't say that it's... it's Dirty not, netball. Not over aggressive. No, no, it's tough and tenacious and fearless netball, and that's what it's all about. So, um, yeah, good start for them. Lakers, as I said, they really miss Mel not being there. I'm not quite sure when she's going to be back, if she's um, injured or not. So, yeah, that they'll, um, I'm sure they'll, they'll amends for it somewhere down the track. Another big game uh, that we'll be keeping our eyes on is uh, Rudan versus East Point, and I had the pleasure of watching bits and pieces of this game. And um, Rudan ended up coming away with the honours, but it was sort of only um, in the last quarter they really, really started to push away. Yeah, I've, I have spoke to Kate McMahon, and she was really happy with Rudan's um, win. It was their first win since they've uh, since she's returned to the club. Um, and, you know, Redan have got a really good team. And they've still got Erin Riley out of that team who's recovering from that broken finger, um, who's still super, super fit as well. Ruby Parry had a really good game, and we know what a prolific goaler that, that Ruby can be. Um, Liv Jorgensen, uh, she was swung from attack to defence. And, she again, uh, similar to uh, Ali, who, Ali Brewer, who, they're, they're young players. She plays 19s for Sovereigns. Uh, and some of these bigger bodies are, gonna, are going to... Um, test them. They mm. don't get that bigger body netball in um, 19s. Um, Emma, Emma, Emma ugh, I can't even say her name now. <laughs> Emma Henry. Um, Emma Inverdi, I think it is. I'm sorry, Emma, you're going to kill me. But um, 
I'm thinking, who is this Emma? And then I realised, oh, it's Emma Henry. She's got married, so congratulations. Um, but again, uh, Kate played with where she was going to play, so we know that she can swing from attack to de uh, defence to attack, and that's what she did. Uh, just showed some real strength down there uh, in power underneath the ring and combined really well with, with um, Ruby. And Cassie Peace is back. We know what a runner she is as well. And, and if you just have a quick look at this game um, since last year, that this game they had three significant players out who mm -hmm. they've lost from their grand final side. So Emma Farrell didn't play this week and we know how well Emma and uh, Lauren Dew combined together. And that, that combination they did lack. Although they had Kylie Bridges in, um, and she shot nine from ten, but most probably the workload was left to Lauren due out goal attack, and it was just not enough. Your shooter should be your main focal point. Um, so Emma wasn't there, but you had, again, Kate McLeod and was Atkinson, most probably the best goalkeeper and the best swing attack in the league last year, and they're out of the team. So it's going to make a significant difference. In saying that, they're still up there, East. They've got a really good team, and I'm sure, again, they'll bounce back. But well done to Radan. Uh, I'm not quite sure where they would finish, but I think they'll be in the top six at least. They seem to be on the right, right track, and I guess with East Point as well, you take a few uh, key players, key position players out of the team. It's going to take a little while to adapt, but that's the same with anything. It's, uh, any team would be in that situation as well. Yeah, yeah, but you just, you just think for, um, for a Dan, once you add... Uh, you've got Emma in goal defence and you put Erin Riley in, uh, in goal keeper, you think, hello, look out, that's a powerhouse uh, defensive combination. I'll put you under the pump with a question here. Redan at their best, would they challenge Sunbury at their best? Oh, I just, I, I don't think anyone's going to challenge Sunbury. I might be proven wrong, but if you look on their team, on the, the, the game I've seen them play, mm. no one would have beaten them that day. Not to say they're not beatable. Um, I just don't know if anyone is tall enough to get around, not tall enough, but is agile enough and maybe physically enough to get around Chloe Curran. Mm -hmm. um, but they could have had a day out, for all I know. Um, and, and yeah, I've coached Sunbury, but this is a totally different Sunbury team than mm. I coach. So I think I might have only coached one of those girls that are in that team. So yeah, Adam Boulderston will have them up and about. It's all about peaking at the right time too, you know. Mm. I hope they haven't peaked, peaked too early. But they've just got the strength around. The thing that will mess with Sunbury is um, the V&L games, because there's so many V&L games through um, through the season that are either Friday night or Saturday or Sunday and that's what's going to happen this week. And that could be a problem with them at the business end of the season yeah. as well. Uh, our season's finished by the time VNL is um, uh, sorry, VNL's done and dusted by then but the lead up could have an effect. Well it's about getting the team gelling together at the right time. Yeah, yeah so. so and that'll be good for the opposition teams to, uh, to really mount their case and really start to play some good netball and get that rhythm going before September. Yeah and you just look, there's some other teams out there doing really well. Look at North, North, North have really said hello, don't forget about us, we're here too. Um, we saw uh, Sash McDonald back and had a blinder as well and combined really, really well with um, Gina McCartan, who went back to shooter. We're not really used to seeing Gina back in shooter on a weekend, but Sasha had a great game. Now, we play on a Sunday. Sovereign's play on Sunday this week, so I know she's <laughs> got limited court. Um, so that was my boss again. So we have limited, um, limited time for her, so we'll see. How we go? Yep, we'll, uh, we'll be. So Chris we're... is getting better. He's not jumping. I didn't chill out this year like I did with Sean. So. <laughs> no, I usually uh, I usually lose my bundle when that uh, that happens. We're getting so. used to him. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's have a look at uh, the, the Stockland uh, Player of the Day or Player of the Round from last week. Yeah, it's back. It's back. Stockland A Grade Player of the uh, of the Round. The, the get out there to Wendery Girls. Uh, so we've got two to do today. So round one, um, I saw a defender who just blew me away and played so well, and that's Sunbury's Ash Hardy. So congratulations, Ash. You've got your voucher coming out to you. We'll put that in the mail. So congratulations. And Dali Amy Gianni, I think it is. Um, for, she had a really good game for my little sources out there in the midcourt and was one of the catalysts into... Um, for Dali to record their, their strong win last week. So um, I think Dali have got the um, the makings of, of a, not a bad team down the, down the road. So good on them to, to Dali and Renee Hulls has taken over there and Marika's done a lot of hard work. But well done, Amy. You had a great game and we'll be sending a voucher out to you next time you're up in uh, in Ballarat. Just drop to uh, Stockland's Lake Winderee. I know it's one of the most popular awards that people are asking about. 
yeah, which is always it. exciting. Yeah, so we'll get something on Facebook and everything like that. So well done, girls. Now, uh, we turn our attention to, uh, to, to round, or the up, up, upcoming round, and uh, the season is just absolutely flying at the moment, Kim, and we turn our attention to, uh, to Ballarat v Melton. Yeah, it is the community umpiring round, though, so not just for football, for netball, so be nice to the umpires, please. Um, yeah, Ballarat... Um, I like Ballarat. They've had a bit of a hard start, but I, I think they're they're really strong. Hayley uh, Fiddler is back from Ninju, which we spoke about, and Katie Lindquist, I think, is a superstar. Um, and Michaela George, I'm not quite sure she played last week, but I, you know, they've got some really good mix. And Gary Cook is a fantastic coach, so Gaz will do some good things with there. Um, I think um, Melton are struggling at the moment too. Um, they're, they're, they're in the rebuilding phase, and I think this will be Ballarat's first win. I think on the board. Yeah, well, so I, I had a good watch of them last week, and they. Um well, even though they went down swinging, uh, they, they showed some confidence potential. That, yeah, uh, there's only two games gone, but in yeah. their second last at ladder, I don't, I don't think that'll last very long. No, no not, not at this stage. Can't sort of take much notice of the ladder at the moment. The team that uh, took down Ballarat last week, uh, North Ballarat City, they are playing a host of Redan this under bit lights. Cracker. Yeah. Well, actually, that game used to be under. It was scheduled for to be under lights, but that has changed to a day game. So yep. jump on the uh, BFNL website to check out the full details on that one. Again, so we'll just uh, wait and see how many. If, if Sash should be limited to, to half a game if she does in play, but she's such a professional, she'll put her A grade game, her BNL game first, most probably. Um, but you know, I think the beauty we saw with North last week, they swung Jetta Heard back into defence from attack, so they can put her back there and stay. And Gina McCartan worked really well with her. I, I heard that McCartan's just dominated last week in the mid court, mm. so it'd be a really good game. Emma Henry's in great form, as we know. Um, uh, Liv Jorgensen's one of the other ones that she plays 19s for... Um, is he coming? I thought someone was coming then. <laughs> We're a bit jumpy now. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure whether Liv will be able to play. So both teams could be a little bit undermanned, but I think North have flexed their muscles and saying, We're here. Yeah, this is, a, this is a big statement for them. I'm jumping on the Redan bandwagon. Uh, I saw both teams in action last week uh, recording wins. I just think Redan have just got a little bit more pace uh, through the midcourt to, uh, to generate the, what they need to, to get the job done. We'll wait and see, Andy. <laughs> uh, the next time we have a look at Sebastopol v Mountain South. We know both of these teams have uh, started pretty well in uh, season 2017. Yeah, this is another... T uh, Mountain South might be another team that's affected by... Um, VNL this, this week. Most VNL teams are playing, so I'm not sure if uh, Betcor will be available or not. I can't mm. remember what day Blaze play. Um, if if Blaze um, does play and Beck can't play, I think Mountain South might be in for a little bit of grief. Um, but again, their defenders, uh, Sebastopol's defenders are pretty strong, and I'm just not sure if Mountain South had the strength all over the court. They're, they've got some young kids in as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think Sebas has got a pretty experienced lineup. I'm going for Sebas. Yeah, going with Sebas as well. Again, like what, uh, what they've dished out already, and they seem to be heading on the right track. Um, now the next game we're going to have a look at is uh, it's probably with the match of the round, surely. Sunbury uh, versus Darley. And great atmosphere around uh, these two clubs and the good feel around where these guys are headed. Yeah, Sunbury and Darley. Um, Darley is a bit of a buggy team for Sunbury. They beat them last year at the end of the season when no one thought they would. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to happen this time. However, again, they're, they're Sunbury's team's full of um, VNL players, so mm -hmm. see where they go. But I think Sunbury will win. It will test Sunbury's depth, though, won't it? Yeah, well, but they've got really strong uh, B-grade girls that they can bring in as well. Um, I think they've won two or three in a row in B-grade, so they can bring them up if they need to. Um, but, yeah, yeah, Dali, um, they've, they've got some good talent there, but I just think if, if you look at last week's team, you would say that Sunbury would win. I'm just a little bit swayed about which way, only because of availability, but I have to go with Sunbury. Well, you've got to go with the winning formula, yep. don't you? At the minute, yep. Yeah, no, you've got to go with Sunbury in that case there. Also jumping on the bandwagon on those guys too. As we head to the last game, East Point v Lake Windery. Both teams coming off uh, narrow losses on the weekend, but both teams desperate to, to, uh, to come back. Yeah, this will be a great game, I think. Um, again, Lauren Jew, because she's got Van Allen on the Tuesday, so she's limited to half a game, which will really affect them. Um, so uh, I think... If Mel Allen's back, I think Lakers will win. 
I'm going to go Lakers. A bit of an upset, but I think Lakers will win. Did love what uh, the resilience I saw from East Point last week, and they just let um, let Redan sort of slip away towards uh, sort of the last five or so minutes. I of can't last believe I'm, I'm tipping against East because last year I don't think I tipped against them once. Oh, let, let that be on the record. Yeah, no I one will forget so, this. So, so hopefully I don't moz them. So remember, we're, we're, we're looking previewing uh, round three. Just look back to this this, this week. As a significant moment in oh, Kim Bailey's not. call. I hope not. You know, I don't like to see teams lose, but someone's got to lose, don't they? Everyone can't win every Oh, week. we could have a draw. <laughs> <laughs> I've tipped a draw last season well, too. There you go. Yeah. Worked out beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the interleague campaign is just around the corner. Yeah, and Annie McCartan's done a great job. She's uh, she's nearly got the team finalised, um, and what I've seen of it, it looks really, really good. So we'll head up to Ballarat on the 13th. Oh, sorry, not Ballarat, Bendigo. I Good old QEO. Yeah, go to the QEO up there, and um, you know they've got some great players up there uh, in um, in Bendigo. Again, I'm a little bit disappointed with the VNL scheduling because it is there's heaps of games on the weekend as well, and clubs don't let them play. So we might be restricted with some of our players. I know there's a couple who've already come back to us and said we can't play because we're playing on the Saturday or Sunday, which is really disappointing. I think at some stage, you know, um, we just need each members' organisations speaking to each other. So we've got the best players available for our, our, VN, for our interleague campaigns. But, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's Netball Vix dealing when they schedule games. So that's a little bit disappointing. Well, but should... we've got the depth to still have a great team. And the, the QEO is a terrific place to watch Netball venue. as well. Beautiful venue, yeah. Where, wherever you are around the QEO, fantastic. And uh, hopefully uh, the, the girls put on a fantastic performance. I'm sure they would. We didn't play last year, so they're champing at the bit to get going because uh, we think we had Western. Did we have Western Correct. region? So they didn't have any netball. So hopefully we'll get the win. We'll move back up the ladder and... Um, we just don't want to play one of those uh, metro leagues because then we don't have netball. It's not going to happen, Kimbo. No. It's not going to happen. No. We're going to be cruising. We're going to win anyway. Yeah, you can just uh, you can sense that there's a good feeling around the BFNL netball side of things at the moment as we get ready for it. We prepare for interleague next week. Kim, it is a pleasure being in the hot seat uh, this week alongside your good self uh, as we, we highlight uh, round two and preview round three. Yeah, so good luck to all teams this weekend. It's just some great games and... Uh, yeah, so are we back next week for Interleague or we're having a rest? Oh, I think we'll be doing something special. Okay, not too special. Thanks everyone, see you later.